recording in progress. Morning, everyone. Just a really quick video to take our under 16s and our under 18s through our strength and conditioning program. One of the sessions to do in your own time that is available as a part of our Stay Ready program. Again, this is a fairly basic program that you can do at home with or without equipment and with or without any any access to weights or a home gym. Body weight is fine, or you can use a, a range of household items as, as different uh, resistance. So what we'll do is we'll go through our first session, which is the, the, the strength session, session A, and then also session B, which is our speed and power session. So the idea with these sessions is that you would probably complete these once a week, I think, once per session per week, uh, but you might want to do it uh, twice per session, or you may want to do the strength session twice and the power session once, depending on what your workload is. Uh, if you're joining in on any of the other Zooms that we're running, or if you've got any of your own training that you're doing with your coach or, or, or through Basketball Victoria or anything like that, we certainly don't want you overdoing it. These sessions are, are not mandatory. They're, they're certainly just there as an option, uh, as something for you guys to, to use uh, during this time. So we'll get straight into it. We're not going to go through uh, too much of the foam rolling. There is a foam rolling tutorial video on YouTube that was provided by Jay Ellis, our strength and conditioning coordinator. Uh, we'll link that through to the Stay Ready website as well so that you guys can go through that if you need to. <clears throat> we will go through a little bit of hip and ankle mobility just quickly. The warm up's the same for both sessions. You'll need a yoga mat depending on the surface. I'm on the carpet here, but I'm still going to use the yoga mat. So come down to our mat just for some really, really quick hip mobility. If you've done a foam roll already, you should be basically ready to go. But my favorite hip mobility exercise is just coming to all fours here, keeping my, my shoulders and elbows locked in, okay? And we're just gonna go really kick one leg at a time back and out to the side without trying to tilt to the side too much. We just wanna work that hip through its full range of motion. So just making little hip circles. Just imagine like you're trying to draw a circle with your knee is probably one of the easiest ways to do it. Five on each side will be plenty. Again, nice and slow and controlled. I'm rushing through it a little bit. But again, kicking that hip up and back first, get that glute activation, then out and around to the side. Bit of ankle mobility. Again, you can do this similar to a stadium. You can do this against the wall if you like. Uh, I like to do it from a kneeling position or a half kneeling position here. So I keep my heel on the ground. I'm applying a bit of gentle pressure above my shin to, to just above my knee here. And I'm just pushing that knee forward a little bit, keeping that heel down to the ground. I should feel that stretch in my Achilles and in my lower calf. You can back off or push off a little bit back into a, a sort of a kneeling, half kneeling stance and then come forward again. I think five times I need a leg for this exercise will be, will be plenty. All right, next exercise we've got is our crab walks with the mini band. So part of the equipment you will need will be these. Um, so our, uh, our mini band, and you'll also need, uh, no, you won't need a skipping rope for this one. But yeah, so you will need a mini band. Uh, if you don't have it, you can still do the exercises, but we're gonna quickly get into our crab walks. So the band's gonna go around our ankles. Grab our yoga mat out of the way here. Yeah. We're doing 10, 10 both ways, two sets of 10. So I've only got a small amount of space. So I'm going to do five and I'm going to do four laps essentially. So again, we come down, bent knees. You can go arms wide like a defensive slide or you can just have your hands on your hips. So I'm going to do five. And then I'm going to come back. Okay, 10 each way. So you do that twice through. So staying low, activating our glutes, bent hips, bent knees. <clears throat> and pushing back across, all right. That's, that's essentially our physical preparation done for both the strength 
uh, basically for the strength and for the for the power session. Oh, we do have some skipping in the power session. So you will need for the power session, you will need a skipping rope. Again, much like the mini bands, if you don't have one currently, you can get online onto Kmart, onto the online store and order one. Ask your parents for, you, for help with that. These two things are not mandatory, but will we'll make your life a lot easier in terms of training from home, having a skipping rope and some form of a resistance band. So the first exercise as a part of the major, as a part of the, the core strength session is a box squat. So if you've got a chair or, or a box or a step or something that you can use as a bit of a guide. Now being our under 16s and our under 18 session, uh, we encourage some form of resistance, but make sure it's safe. If you've got a weight set up at home and you can use a squat rack and you know how to use it properly, by all means, go for it. Um, but make sure you're being supervised, make sure you know how to use it, make sure you've got parental permission. Otherwise, what we're doing is essentially just doing a body weight squat to a bench. Uh, we can use a dumbbell or a kettlebell as some resistance. So I've got a kettlebell here. I'm going to hold that in a goblet position, which is just holding it with both hands underneath the weight. Elbows stay sort of tucked in, not flared out to the side. And we're into our squat position. So again, feet hip distance apart, standing in front of my chair here. And I'm just going to sit my bum down, three, two, one, tap down and explode up. Again, tempo is really important. So I'd like, like us to count to three on the way down. One, two, three, and explode up. All right. That tempo, that eccentric lowering under control, keeping our back straight and explode up. Okay, so again, from the side, my feet are hip distance apart. I'm driving my knees gently apart and then exploding out. We don't want knees coming together like, like that. All right, again, we're gonna use our kettlebell. Move our box back or our chair back for a little bit here. And we've got an RDL, which is just a Romanian deadlift. Okay, so a Romanian deadlift. Again, now I'm holding onto the kettlebell and the handles. A Romanian deadlift is just like a deadlift. So again, we change from a squat, which is hips and knees. In terms of when we sit down, it's about 50% knees, 50% hips. Our RDL becomes probably 80, almost 90% hips. So it's less knee bend. It's a very gentle knee bend, but more in the hips. So it's more about almost pointing our chest down at the carpet or at the ground in front of us. And you'll feel that stretch a little bit more through your hamstrings. So it's more of a, what we call posterior chain exercise. So you're working the muscles of your lower back, your glutes and your hamstrings, but also your core. So again, really important that we, we're not rounding through the back like so. We're keeping our back locked in. One way to do that is again, just try and remember to activate your lats and roll your shoulder blades down. Okay, roll your shoulder blades back and down. And that's how we look at the bottom position here, nice flat back. Again, straight line from the back of our head all the way down to our bum. So we imagine like there's a broomstick running right down the middle of our spine. And then we come up and we lock, it, lock our hips in. Okay, so that, that again, we're slow on the way down. Three, two, one, lock hips up and in. Okay, explosive on the way up. So that's our kettlebell RDL. <clears throat> Next exercise we're gonna do, we need a dumbbell or you can use the kettlebell again, is a half kneeling dumbbell shoulder press or kettlebell shoulder press. You may need a mat. You may, if you've got a yoga mat nearby, if you're working out outside, you need to put something under your knee. Again, that half kneeling position, similar to what we did in warm ups. So we're bringing that knee to the ground. I've got my left leg forward here and my right arm is my working arm, okay? So all we're doing here is we're bringing the weight up. <clears throat> we're getting it locked in. If you're using a dumbbell, you could use a brick for this. You could use a tin of beans, anything as resistance. We're keeping that hip locked in here. So there's a little bit of a um, hip flexor stretch, keeping our core locked in. So we're not arching through our lower back and we're not sitting back here and we're just pushing the weight up overhead. So single arm, 
half kneeling press. So again, pushing up, if you've got a dumbbell, kettlebell, anything that you can safely use as resistance. So from the front, what that looks like is again, I've got my right knee down. So my right arm's working. I've got my core locked in, controlling my breathing. I might use this hand as a bit of a counterbalance because it is a bit of a core exercise here. We don't want to sit out to the side. We're pushing up. You don't need a lot of weight for this to be fairly challenging. It's just a really good upper body strength exercise. Again, controlling your breathing throughout that. Next exercise we've got is chin-ups. Okay, now if you don't have somewhere that you can do your chin-ups, if you don't have a bar at home or you don't have a system where you can do chin-ups, that's okay. Again, we can use our kettlebell or our resistance. You could even use a resistance band, okay? So if you've got a resistance band, our chin-ups is just another exercise that we'd like to do to work the muscles of our posterior chain, but, but further up our, up our body. So if you don't have the, the capability to do chin-ups, which I don't inside today, you can do a bent over row. So it could be both hands on a kettlebell or with two dumbbells or with a barbell. Again, you're coming to that almost like that deadlift position, but just a little bit higher up. So soft bend in the knees, bend in the hips, back stays straight. And we're just rowing that weight up to our chest. Okay. If you've got a bench or a chair, you could do that as a single arm row. So again, we're here. I've got my left leg forward. I've got my left hand on the bench for stability. I'm trying to keep my back straight, but I'm in a, a lunge position here and I'm just rowing the weight up, keeping my elbow to my side, rowing the weight past my body here. Again, controlling the tempo. So explosive up, slow on the way down is a way to make it a lot more challenging. If that doesn't work for you, you'd prefer to use a resistance band. An exercise we can do is just band pull apart. Okay, so I've got my resistance band here. I'm just gonna go with one loop, all right? Hands are about, about two fist distance apart on the band. And I'm literally, all I'm doing here is I'm holding the band out in front of me and I'm pulling the band apart and bringing it to my chest. So I sort of start just above my eye level. My kneel here so you guys can see. So I'd start with the band just above my eye level. This is gonna simulate almost simulate a chin up movement without needing a bar or anything to do chin ups on. So again, I've got the band up overhead and I'm just bringing, just stretching that band down and bringing it to my chest. So you could do that as another form. So there's three exercises you can do instead of chin ups. You can do indoors, all sorts of things. All right, reverse lunge. We've got a reverse lunge. <clears throat> so again, this is just like our split squat. You can hold a dumbbell, any sort of a resistance that you've got, you can get your hands on. Again, hold it in that goblet position. We start feet together, hip about, feet about hip distance apart. Step back, drop that back knee down and push forward, okay? So again, you don't have to step too far back. We don't want to stretch out too much. That's probably too far. We want that back thigh. When we step back, we want that back thigh to be pretty straight when we come down, okay? And you push up and forward in the one movement. So that's a reverse lunge. We step back, almost like a sprint takeoff here. We drop that knee down, push up and forward. That's our reverse lunge. Our next exercise here is actually a single arm dumbbell row, which I just showed you guys as an alternative to our chin up. So if you've already done a single arm dumbbell row because you can't do a chin up, I would do, like I said, with our banded exercise, that's probably the preference. So the band pull apart would be the preference for a, as a supplement to the, uh, sorry, as a, as a replacement to the chin up. Otherwise we've got our, um, a single arm dumbbell row. So they're probably your two posterior exercises you'd like to do. If you do have a, a resistance band, one other exercise you can try. I'll just come to my uh, 
bowl here and I'll just show you it's another form of a band pull apart you can do. So you can get your resistance band, wrap it around a pole, wrap it around something nice and stable. And again, we call this a banded base pull. So we're sitting down in a squat, hands again about two fists apart, two fists distance apart on the band, and we're just pulling the band to our face. Okay, so we're pulling the band into our face. Again, quickly in, slowly back out. This one, your elbows can flare out a little bit. And this is a really great exercise for your upper, upper body, your rear delts, and your traps. Same sort of movement that's going to really be similar to a single arm dumbbell row. Okay, that's it for our strength portion of, of, of our program, our at-home program for, for this block. We're gonna move into now our explosive work. So our speed and power. So I lied to you guys, you will need a skipping rope for this, for this one because part of the warm up is single leg skipping. So if you don't have a skipping rope, if you've done sessions with me before, you'll know an exercise called a pogo hop. So what a pogo hop is, is essentially just take the skipping rope away. Your heels don't hit the ground, but you're just working on that reactive. You want less time on the ground. And you want to spring up as much as you can without bending your knees and hips too much. Okay, that becomes a squat jump. So we're just here. So it's like skipping without the rope except we're going to be doing single leg skipping. All right. So you're on a single leg. You're going to do 20 seconds on each leg. So if you've got your rope and you've got space to, to skip, obviously you've got your skipping rope. If not, you're doing pogo hops like me. So you're on a single leg. We've just got that knee up. So it's just adding a little bit of extra resistance to this by basically doing it on the single leg. The same rules apply. Okay that heel still shouldn't touch the ground. You may not be as quick. You may not be as explosive doing it on a single leg, but that's okay. That's the whole point, okay? So that's our first exercise. Um, that's a part of our warm up. The second exercise is a part of our physical prep is our band crab walks again. So 10 in each direction. I'm not gonna redo those. Um, you can go back to the start of the video if you need to see the tutorial for those. And then we move into our, our, our session proper. Okay, so our actual exercises. The first exercise is a, is a sprint with a reactive cut. Now that might be difficult without, you know, teammates or without a coach. Essentially what it will mean is that you would have someone, so I'm starting at this end of the room. You would have someone starting at the other end, maybe 10 meters away pointing okay so you would start in a in a sprint position okay you would take off and then you would have that person point left or right with their hand and what you would do halfway through the sprint is you would be taking off and then you would plant and take off in either direction that they were pointing all right so it's a really good exercise for reactive change of direction it's an exercise where we're at risk of injury. We're on a single leg for a second there and we're pushing to take off. And that can cause a lot of issues for our athletes. But practicing that in a reactive format can be really helpful. Okay. So if you can do that, you've got a parent, you've got a sibling, if you've got someone that you can meet and do this session together and you can stand, say, 10 meters in front of one another, take off. So reactive sprint, take off. As soon as you get that cue left or right, you plant mid mid stride and take off. If you can't do that, we're gonna do an acceleration deceleration, which again, is fairly simple. We're doing eight to 10. I'd say do four on either leg or five on either leg. I'm gonna start with my right leg back in a, in a sprint takeoff position. Okay, so my left, my left hand's forward here so that when I take off, I'm swinging my right arm forward. <clears throat> you could start with your right arm forward if you wanted to. Right arm forward, right foot back. Okay, so that when we take off, you're swinging. Yeah, that's probably better. So we got right arm forward, right arm back, left arm back. So we're just gonna take off three or four steps as quickly as we can. Okay, we're sprinting into a quick deceleration. Okay, so we're using that pitter patter, that technique we all know and love as a part of our defensive drills. Right arm forward, right leg back, bent, we're up on that toe or the ball of the foot ready to take off. We swing that left arm through and come to that pitter-patter stop. 
make sure you alternate sides, okay? So I've had right leg back. Now I want left foot back or left leg back, left arm forward. And I'm just gonna take off, swing that arm through, pitter patter, come to a stop. All right, we've got our box bench jumps. So I don't have um, a bench in here. I've got a chair, but I'm not gonna jump off that because it's unsafe. So I'm just gonna use a little step that I've got here in my lounge room. I should be able to see that, hopefully. This little step here, That's this little wooden step. So the next exercise is just a box jump or a bench jump. Ideally, you guys would have something a little bit higher. You might use the steps in your backyard or front yard. It might be two steps, three steps high. The most important thing here is still making sure we focus on our landing. So again, with this exercise, we're, we're swinging our arms back and through and we're exploding up, but we land in that soft knees, soft hips position. The, the, the quieter the landing, the better. And just walk down, step down off your box, swing arms through and back and up. Stick that landing again. I wouldn't make this a continuous exercise. It's probably a little bit dangerous. Um, I know some places you might've done this as a part of a high intensity interval session before where, you know, you just constantly, you know, up, down, up, down. You can do that, but just be really careful the height of the box you're using. Make sure you've got a safe, stable box and a soft, you know, a stable surface underneath you if you're going to do it like that. That's not the idea of this session. This session is the quality of the reps as opposed to getting your heart rate up too high. We do have hit sessions as a part of our Stay Ready program to get your heart rate up. This session's more about quality. So coming up, sticking that landing properly. If you're on a proper box, you'll just turn around and step off and go again for three sets of three. Our next exercise, we're still gonna use the bench here or the box, but the exercise is essentially stepping off the box straight into a broad jump, okay? So I'll demonstrate and then I'll show you guys a broad jump and what that is. So essentially you'd have a, a box a little bit higher than this, um, probably two steps high. You would step off. As soon as you step off, you're not gonna focus too much. You're not gonna to waste too much time in that landing. You're gonna step off and then quickly jump out as far as you can. All right, so it's a bit hard to see here. I don't have the right angles, but I'll show you here how broad jump. So if I was stepping off the box, I'm stepping off the box or, or off the step or whatever you might be using, I step off and I go straight into a horizontal jump. So we're working on horizontal explosiveness there. It's really good for sprint takeoff. So I'm not gonna use my chair because it's not safe, but if I step off my box, I'm imagining I'm up on my, you know, my uh, plyometrics box here on my steps, I step off and then it's a quick reactive movement. So notice how I'm not landing, taking heaps of time and then exploding out again. It's boom, it's reactive force development. Okay, so it's trying to explode off the mark. All right, our next exercise and our next couple of exercises, there is a bit of a requirement if you have a dead ball. Okay, if you've got a dead ball or you've got a medicine ball, or you've got something you can throw, then you're at a massive advantage. I've got one here. I can't do all the exercises inside, but I can show you the technique. Um, I'm going to show you some, some uh, ideas if you don't have a med ball or a dead ball or something that you can use to throw, okay? So the first exercise we've got is called a keg toss. So what that means, and I can't do it indoors right now, but if I was outdoors, I'm essentially simulating like a like a squat movement, but I'm bringing the ball down between my legs and I'm exploding up with hips, hips, knees and ankles all exploding up at the same time. And I'm throwing the ball up over my head as high as I can. Okay, so I'm throwing it up over my head. I wanna throw it behind me and step forward. Okay, so make sure you're doing this in your backyard or driveway where you've got plenty of space. You know, you're not gonna throw it and break something or God forbid your dog's flying behind you and you throw it up and it hits your dog or something. Make sure you've got plenty of space, no pets or loved ones are around and you're just bending knees and hips, swinging that ball down. You don't have to swing it through. You're just swinging it down almost to the ground, using that momentum to then swing back up explosively, roll it over your head and step forward. You wanna go for height, maximum height. You don't wanna throw it too far behind you 
throwing up as high as you can. If you don't have a keg, uh, if you don't have a keg ball, you don't have a ball, we go back to our kettlebell. Okay, a very similar movement is a kettlebell swing. Okay, so we, again, our keg toss is three by three. So we're just gonna do probably three, unless you've got a really light kettlebell, you might wanna pump that up to about six or eight. But the kettlebell swings a very similar movement like our deadlift, just a bit more explosive. You're just swinging the weight through, our back is straight and swinging up. So it's all locking hips, locking hips and knees. We don't wanna swing the weight too high up over our head. Okay, we want this to be all driven by our hips. So we've got a gentle bend in our knee. The best way to start this exercise is to stand just behind the kettlebell. Okay, stand up nice and straight. Soft bend in your knees. So only a very incremental bend in your knees. The rest is in your hips. Come forward to grab the kettlebell. Okay, and then essentially you're gonna bring it back between your legs and use all hip, all the power of your hips to swing the weight up. And that'll get you into a nice rhythm. Swing the kettlebell back through but the whole time we're in control of the movement, okay? That will be as good for you as what the keg toss will. Next exercise again is a rotational med ball throw. So you need a med ball or a dead ball, but we've got an exercise we can do if you don't have it. Now I'm not necessarily gonna do the throw here because I can't throw it against my wall. But if you do have an area outside, a brick wall, um, even a partner, if you've got a brother or sister, or you've got a mum or dad that can help you with this exercise, I'm going to start with my right knee down. I'm in a lunge position or a half kneeling position, similar to our shoulder press earlier. I've got my dead ball, med ball, and all I'm doing here is I'm swinging the ball back across to my right hip and I'm flinging it there at the camera. Okay, so if I had a wall here, I'd be throwing it to a wall if I had a partner. I'd be throwing it to a partner explosively, okay? Boom, they'd throw it back to me, catch it, swinging back and tossing again, okay? So that's our, that's our, our keg ball or med ball rotational throw, all right? If you can't do that, again, if you've got, a, you've got some sort of a weight, could just be a kettlebell, could be a brick, could be anything, we're just gonna do our twists. So like a Russian twist, they call it. Again, we're, we've got our kettlebell, we're holding it in a goblet position, or we're holding it at the handles, or you might even have a weight plate like I've got behind me here and you want, want to hold onto that, or a dumbbell would be fine as well. You bring knees and feet up, keeping knees and feet together, and you're touching the weight to either hip. Okay, so that's the same sort of movement. It's rotation through our core. Okay, you can make it explosive. So you bring it across as quickly as you can. Again, very, very good exercise for that rotational power through our core. So that's just another replacement exercise you can do for the metal, med ball throws. Our last exercise is clap push-ups. So just an explosive, explosive variation on our push-ups. So we'll grab our yoga mat again. We've got variations for our 16s, 18s. I would hope that by now majority would be doing push-ups on at least on our knees with our hips locked in like so, okay? Not with our bums up like this, not on all fours. So our hips are locked in here. Same technique as, as a normal push-up. We're just doing an explosive, trying to come up to a clap off the ground. So we're pushing up here, trying to come up and land, okay? So it's just adding that explosive intent to move, intent to to be explosive for our upper body, which is obviously really beneficial in basketball for, for chest passes, even shooting, boxing out, things like that. Anything that requires upper body strength. Again, if you're on your toes, do it on your toes. If you're on your knees, just make sure you lock your hips in. Elbows, are they don't have to stay tucked by our side, but they're, they're not flaring out either, okay? Keep our hips and our core locked in, no sag through our lower back. We're coming down. And it's floating up and then catching ourselves. Okay, if you're on your toes, chest to the ground, explode up and catch. Okay, you're doing as many of those as possible. Let's say in, in a 30 second sort of a time span, I would think anywhere between, I think five is a really good amount to do. I think 10, you're probably getting to too many. You're not really working on speed and power anymore. 
So if you get to 10, you might need to add some extra resistance somehow, okay? If you're already doing them on your toes, um, you know, you might have to try and find extra ways to challenge yourself. Maybe a parent can push down on your upper body as you're trying to explode up or something. If you're on your knees and you're getting 10 in 30 seconds, it's probably time to try a couple on your toes. All right, guys, that's of our tutorial. So refer back to this at any stage if you need uh, some, some guidance on, on how to do any of the exercises listed in the program. I, I hope you enjoy the program. I hope you get some use out of them. Uh, we will be doing live sessions, but I know particularly for 16, 18, sometimes it's, it's easier to do these sessions in your own time. If you need any additional um, resources or any ideas on how you could make any of these exercises a little bit more challenging or change them up a little bit if you've got an injury, uh, I think most of you have my email or your parents have my email. Just, just send me an email and I'll be happy to uh, come back to you with some ideas and, and some extra exercises. All right, enjoy your weekend, everyone. See ya.